Hello, Jenny here, uh, doing a wee solo show, which is totally out of the comfort zone, but let's see how it goes. Hopefully I don't have to unpick. I was going to bring a cardboard cut out of John with me, or Natasha, or Vic, but uh, no, it didn't fit in my suitcase, unfortunately. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what I'm doing business-wise, where you can kind of stay in touch with me, and I'm also going to be telling you how to make this wee shirt here. So obviously I... I do try and be very, I try and forward plan all of my show, all of my sewing, but I have ended up in winter sewing for summer. So I'm trying to be super, super organized this year. And I'm doing my spring wardrobe in, well, at the start of the year. So it's obviously still winter, it's a bit chilly just now, but I'm looking forward uh, to the sun coming out and going my holidays. Obviously, I've got my wedding, which is in Cyprus this year. So I am hoping to have an entire DIY summer wardrobe. This little shirt looks quite impressive, looks quite difficult. And the, you know, it's got a nice wee collar there. It's got the button stand. It's got an optional tie front. So this can actually, you can untie that and it can just be a normal little shirt. Um, and it's got a little cuff on the sleeve there as well, a couple of different options that I can talk about later on. Um, so it looks quite difficult and quite impressive, but actually it's not difficult. And I would say that if you're a beginner, you would be able to do this. So a beginner to dressmaking, not an absolute beginner to sewing. Um, and that's why I wanted to do this pattern because it's just a nice accessible pattern. It's by a company called Love Notions and it's a PDF pattern. So you can just go on, you can just search for the company Love Notions. And this is called the Melody Dolman shirt. So it's a, it's a really nice little pattern here. The instructions are really clear, which again is, is dead important when you're, you're starting to dress make. You don't want to be getting stuck straight away at the first hurdle. It's got lots of really nice diagrams and things in there. Uh, super easy. I was actually really shocked when I made this shot at how simple it was. Uh, so that's why I wanted to do it with you guys today. Um, fabric wise, I've got some bonkers fabric because it's out of my own personal stash and I've been wanting to make a shirt out of this fabric for ages. So you can let me know what you think of this. It's very summery, it's very beach holiday and it's yellow and it's got two cans on it. It's a little bit bonkers but I totally love it. And I think I was talking to someone else on the fans page I'm sure who had this fabric, and I can't remember what they made. They might have made a, a little blouse or something out of it um, in summer, because this is from my summer stash, obviously. Um, but yeah, so I know that some of you guys have this fabric at home. You can get it online. I bought it in, on the internet somewhere on one of the many fabric websites that I visit on almost a daily basis. So that's the fabric that I'm going to be using. The first thing that we're doing Got my front and my back here. Right. I have marked all my notches. There's not too many notches on this pattern, which again is, is another reason why it's a nice, easy beginner pattern. Um, it's got two bits of interfacing on your two front pieces. So in this one here, so that's my back piece. Wait, I'll turn this round. Back piece is cut on fold. Yeah, and you've got two front pieces that look like a bit of an unusual shape. You might be thinking what was going on with this entire neckline, but actually this is a facing. So sometimes facings, which go on the inside like a tiny little lining, sometimes facings are completely separate parts, but in this one, they've just got a fold. And what you've also got is a bit of interfacing down the front, and that is where your button stand goes. So you've got that on both of your front pieces. I've already iron those little bits on. The other bit of interfacing that we've got in this pattern is on the collar pieces. So you've got two collar pieces. One is an upper collar and one's a lower collar. And here we are. I have already interfaced that. So you've got two that are exactly the same size and shape and one of them gets interfaced. So you can just do that all beforehand as well. Right, so the first step then is we are going to attach our shoulder seams. So I'm just going to open this out and right sides together. And 
And we're going to place this on there. And this one on here. So I'll just stick some pins in there. And then we will get sewing. I'm going to see if I can make this entire shirt in an hour. We will see if I can do it or not. Bit of a challenge. I made this, um, the little one on the mannequin the other day. And I think it took me probably just over an hour, but I was still getting used to the pattern, so I was still having to properly read it, whereas now, now it's in my head. I don't have to read, read back the instructions all the time. So we'll see how it goes. The seam allowance on this pattern is one centimetre. The American pattern, so I think in the, the pattern it says three eighths, but that's more or less a centimetre, which is my favourite seam allowance. So that's perfect for me. Right. Okay, so just with a normal straight stitch and a one centimetre seam allowance, I'm just going to stitch these shoulder seams. I tell you, it is so weird being on here on your own without, without a presenter. I've been having nightmares about talking so much nonsense on here that everyone's like, she's not even talking about sewing. And I've got the, this table's down to as low as it can go because I don't have to accommodate anyone else's height, which is quite nice. So I obviously own um, a sewing tuition company called Sew Confident, which is S-E-W Confident. And I've had the business for, since 2012 we opened actually. So I've had it for a wee while, started in Glasgow, still got the Glasgow studio. And we focus on the social and the de-stressing -stress side of the hobby, as well as obviously teaching you how to do all sorts of things. We've got dressmaking classes, we've got overlocker classes, we do quilting. I don't do the quilting. We've got tutors, that, experts that come in and do all of our classes for us. But um, if you are in near any of our studios, so we've got Birmingham, which is our newest one, with which I was working on when I was coming down to, to film with, with Sewing Quarter here as well. So that was very handy. And we've got Chorley and we also have Dundee. And perhaps by the time by the time you're watching this, we might have another one, who knows? But if you are near us, you should pop in and pop in and see us. I kind of go all over the country, popping into all the different studios. Um, so I'm normally at kicking about one of the studios somewhere. So that is my shoulder seams done. At home, I would normally have my overlocker sitting beside me as well, and I would just overlock these raw edges. If you don't have an overlocker, you can obviously just zigzag your raw edges. This fabric, it's actually not too bad on the free front. Mm, yeah, you would need to be careful with this. So a wee zigzag on that raw edge, or an overlocking stitch if you have an overlocker. I am gonna do a wee zigzag here. So when you're doing a zigzag, basically what it does is it kind of, your zigzag wraps th threads around that raw edge and stops any of these wee fibery bits coming away. So if you don't protect these raw edges, sometimes what will happen is it will just keep fraying and fraying and fraying until it gets to your straight stitch there, and then the straight stitch frays off as well. Um, and then it comes apart, so obviously you don't want that to happen. That's why your zigzags or your overlocking is really important, especially some fabrics. Uh, that I've got quite a loose weave, they fray really, really bad and they just completely fall apart. Right, so the stitch settings that I've got for my zigzag here, I'm going to put my width up to about four and a half and I have my length at 1.5, somewhere around that. As long as it's a nice wide zigzag, then it's all right. And then I want one side of my zigzag to ever so slightly come off the edge of my fabric. If you stitch a bit further in and you end up with your stitches, you know, not at the very edge of your fabric here, 
then what you'll find is your fabric will fray until it gets to the zigzag and then it'll stop fraying. So it's not the end of the world, even if you are a little bit further in. I'm going to make this a little bit wider, get it up to a five and a half. It's not a very pretty stitch, this, but remember it's on the inside so you won't see it. You can see that it's not a very attractive stitch. Your overlocker is much nicer, and I would say if you've got an overlocker, definitely use it. They look much better, but um, zigzag for the purpose of you know stopping fabric fraying is totally fine. So I'll just do the same on my other one. I think I'm going to be making these shirts in every colour. I was so impressed. You know, sometimes you make something and you just think, I'm going to have this in five colours and everyone is going to be wanting one of these shirts off me. They're so, so cute and perfect for summer. You could even wear them to work, actually, as well. They're um, dead cute. Right, let's see where we are. OK, so collar. So you can put this to one side and we'll grab your collar pieces now. So you've got two collar pieces. And there are notches on your collar as well. So mark in all your notches, two there. And I have marked my notches in this, but then I put my interfacing on. So let me just find them again. There they go. And where's that one? Grab my pattern piece and just find this other notch. There we go. The interface collar piece is your under collar. So it's the bit that goes underneath. If you have a fabric that's quite sheer, then you might want to do it the other way around. So for this fabric, I don't actually even know what this fabric is. I got this fabric at a D-stash event that we held in one of our studios where everyone brought all the fabric that they didn't want anymore and we all had a bit of a swap about. It was, it was a really nice event. I went home with more than I brought though, which was completely defeats the purpose of actually de-stashing. But it, it kind of feels like, feels like a bit of an acetate. -y. It's an unusual fabric. A little bit, it's probably supposed to be like a faux silky, but it's definitely um, not a silk. It's really nice, but it is a bit see-through. So what I found was that on my collar, I could see my seam allowance through my collar. I could probably show you the under collar. There, you can see that there. You can see the seam allowance under the collar. I don't know if you can get that on the. It's actually not even showing up too much on. You just have to take my word for it. And in person, it was annoying me. I could see the seam allowance. So what I did was I ended up using my interfaced piece as my top collar because the interfacing stopped me being able to see through um, the the collar. So you can. Flip it round if you want, that's not a, not a problem. It is supposed to be the bottom one though. Right, I'll grab my iron. So on the upper collar, which is in the uninterfaced piece, we're going to just fold in the seam allowance and press in the seam allowance between the two notches. So the seam allowance is actually a centimeter. So I'm going to just measure so that I get this right. See if I've snipped in enough, and I haven't. So I'm just going to snip in a wee bit more. Okay. Um, and just folding this back. and giving it a wee press. This will become clear why we're doing this later on. It's a handy wee, wee tip. And then, 
Then our collar just goes together, right sides together. Like that. And we're just going to stitch along this short edge, right along here and down here with your one centimetre seam allowance again. I'm just going to pop a couple of pins in there. Collars are one of the things that I know people can get a little bit scared by, but this one is super simple. Sometimes collar pieces, you'll have a top, obviously you've got a top collar and, a, and an under collar, and sometimes they're, they're different sizes slightly, so you're supposed to stretch one to fit the other. This one's much simpler, it's the same size. So it's not difficult at all. Pins. Okay. So centimeter seam allowance again. Oh, still on. make sure you're on a straight stitch, not a zigzag. There we go. and just a wee reverse at the start and at the end as well. So you're going to stitch when you get to the corner, leave your needle in, lift your presser foot, change direction. It keeps your place for you if you keep your needle in. You can let me know what you think of this bonkers fabric. It comes in less bonkers colours as well, I believe. But I just love yellow. Yellow is my favourite colour. It doesn't go with anything really though, so I'm quite a colourful person and I've had to rein in. My winter, my winter coat uh, is normally a, a wild colour, which means it doesn't go with anything else. And my bag that I use all the time is bright purple, so it's... Uh, it's a bit of a nightmare getting dressed, but this last winter there, I, I opted for like a grey leopard print one, so it kind of goes with more stuff. And in summer, you don't really wear as many layers, so you can get away with this bonkers fabric. I'm sure it'll be fine. Same again, keeping my needle in, lifting my presser foot, change the direction. And a wee reverse at the end. There we go. Then I'm going to trim my seam allowance. It asks you to trim your seam allowance down to a quarter inch. So just a couple of millimetres from your stitching. I'm just going to do that now. And that is to reduce the bulk in the, in the collar. This fabric is quite fine anyway. But we'll just do as we're told. Cut this off. At the corners, I sometimes clip them to reduce even more of the bulk there because you want a nice pointed corner when you turn them out. Okay, then we're going to turn it out to the right side and we'll give it another repress. I should have just left the iron out, shouldn't I? Let's grab it again. This is handy. I need to get myself one of these for home, I think, rather than having the ironing board up all the time. Right, there we go. So I'm just going to use my scissors to try and get as, as sharp a corner as I can here. That looks fine. Same on the other side. There we go. And then we'll give it a press. So if, if John was here, I'd probably be telling him about my, uh, my new rescue dog. I don't think I've mentioned my rescue dog, have I? We rescued a dog seven, seven weeks ago, eight weeks ago, 
and it has opened a whole world of sewing for me. I actually considered coming on here and doing a dog jacket because that's pretty much all I've been sewing recently. She's very cute. She is a cross between a pug and a shih tzu and something else curly, some kind of poodle perhaps. Um, she's absolutely bonkers. What a life changer a dog is. I'm sure some of you will know if you've got one at home. We're getting a lot more exercise, having to walk her all the time as well. She's good fun. But yeah, I can see a lot of dog accessories in my sewing, sewing horizon for sure. I also want her to be, when we're out on a walk, I'd like her to be like the best dressed dog. I get a little bit competitive like that where we live. Everyone's got like, all the other dogs have got beautiful jackets and designer jackets. And I'm thinking, I'm going to make Stella, her name's Stella, the best dog jacket and everyone's going to be so jealous. It's totally like keeping up with the Joneses where I stay. Right, nice and flat and pressed. What you want to be careful of as well, if possible, I can show you, you might not be able to see this, but there's a bit of an edge. So this is my upper collar. So this is the bit that's going to be on the outside. So what you don't want is to be able to see any of the under collar kind of poking out there. So I'm just going to roll that back and press that again so that we can't really see. any of the under collar coming out. And then we'll top stitch this in place. There we go, that's better. That side's fine and that's all fine as well. Right, top stitching nice and close to the edge. Um, you can decide, so with top stitching, a, a lot of my customers will say, oh, you know, oh, I'm never going to be able to get that close to the edge, and whatever you decide the top stitching, how far in you want to come from the edge is fine, as long as you stick to it. So if you want to come in, you know, four millimetres from the edge, which is quite a bit in, then that's fine. Just make sure that all the top stitching on that item is four mil in from the edge. I'm going to, you can also use, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but there's, there's lots of little um, notchy bits on the sewing machine. Um, all sewing machines have them and they are good for helping you. I can maybe take this off and show you actually. These are good for keeping you nice and straight. I don't know if you can see that wee bit there. Yeah, so they, they help you stay straight. They help you stay the, the same measurement in from the outside basically. They're good for seam allowance and all that. I use these all the time. I'm going to keep the edge of my fabric against the wee one eighth notch there and that is going to keep me nice and close to my edge. So you can try that. One eighth is, is a pretty good um, is a pretty good width in for top stitching. It's nice and close to your edge. It gives you something else to look at as well that isn't the needle. Sometimes looking at the needle means you just go all ski with. And I'm going to do the same thing again where I'm going to keep my needle in, lift my presser foot and change direction. Sometimes the machine struggles at an edge like that. The feed dogs can struggle to pull the fabric through, so I've just given it a wee helping hand. Top section needs concentration, that's why I've gone quiet there. Same again, needle in, lift my presser foot and change direction. Okay, there we go. 
So that's my collar, all nice and top stitched, sitting nice and flat. The next step is we want to pop the collar, attach, okay. We're going to uh, pop the collar into our shirt, the bit that we stitched earlier with the shoulder seams there. And this is getting stitched into the, with the right sides together. So we're going to match the notches and it's going to get stitched in around here. That is going to look like a magic eye on the telly when you're watching it. Apologies. Fabric's bonkers. Right. So I'm going to match, first of all, I'm going to match my centre notch here with my centre back and my collar. I'm just going to cut that again because my interfacing is hiding it a little bit. And I'm going to cut this little sliver of interfacing off, sweet extra bit. Okay. So match that notch there. There is another notch that matches with the shoulder seam here. And my seam allowance, I'm going to push back. So if you were wearing this, I'd be pushing my seam allowance towards the back of the garment. Another wee pin. And then the edge of my collar matches to, there's two notches on this bit here. And the edge of the collar matches to the first notch. So there's one there and there's one there. We we'll match with that one. Just in case you freak out and you're trying to stretch it all in to that one, which, you know, I definitely did not do at home. Definitely did. I suppose that's the benefit of watching one of these shows as you can figure out what, what not to do, because I've already probably done it wrong the first time. And then same on the other side. So I'm going to match that notch to the shoulder seam. And then match the edge of the collar to that notch there. and then we're going to stitch this in so same seam allowance again one centimeter shouldn't need stretched in, it fits pretty well, so that's good. can be really fiddly putting a collar in sometimes if you have to stretch it to fit. This kind of pattern is something that would be perfect for, we do pattern classes in, at So Confident as well, where you can just bring a pattern along. And you get help with it, you get help with the fitting, with even just how to measure yourself and what size to cut out. Um, patterns can be a bit of a minefield sometimes, with the jargon and all the notches and everything on there. Dressmaking is obviously my favourite, so I'm just talking about the dressmaking classes all the time. Um, but we do do other things as well. We've got our most popular class this year uh, has probably been our arm knitting, actually which is where you get an absolutely ginormous ball of yarn and use your arms as knitting needles. And, you know, all our customers are absolutely loving it. I'm feeling like there might be a little tuck under here, so I'm just making sure that it's all nice and flat before I continue, because that would be annoying if there was a tuck in it. There we go.
yeah, the arm knitting class is great. I've got a couple of the the big balls of wool in my house to make myself some of these big chunky blankets as well. Not got round to it yet, but that is what I plan to do with my next day off. Just take your time sewing this, this bit in um, so you don't have to unpick anything. I'm hoping mine will be all right. And a wee reverse there, back tack, the end. Okay. Okay, so let's have a look. No, no tucks. That's good. Right. So you can see now, this is the point where if I'm at home, I would start to try this on because I try things on. I, even when I have to cut out the pattern, I'll like put it on me and be like, oh, that's going to look nice. I try and get a little sneak preview because I am so impatient. So at this point, I would definitely be trying this on. It's almost a sharp. We've not got side seams, but it's really coming. You can see how quickly it's coming together. Uh, and you can get a wee idea for how it's going to look. Can really, f I can feel myself, you know, wearing this, sipping a wee pina colada somewhere. So you can see it really coming together. Uh, the next step then, let me just check here. It is, right, okay. Back onto the neckline again. And we're going to stitch the facing, which is attached to the front piece. Move that one out of the way. So basically, this folds back on itself. It gets stitched in here, and then it gets folded out the other way and then it basically it holds all your raw edges, especially with the collar here, it tucks all the raw edges in so that you can't see them on the outside. There is a notch that tells you where to fold it and you can also use the, the bit of interfacing on the inside should be lined up pretty perfectly if you've ironed it, assuming you've ironed it in the right place of course. So this gets folded back like that. And this should come right up to round about where your shoulder seam is. So my shoulder seam is sitting here and this will just come slightly past it and it'll get folded, it'll get folded back like that and we'll be stitching along here. So I'll just pop some pins in there. You want to, you'll be stitching through quite a few layers here, so you want to catch the bit that you've just sewn under here and this top layer as well. Those notches match each other. If you can see that there. And your interfacing is on that underside there. And I'm going to fold back. I actually think the pattern earlier on tells you to, to iron back um, a bit of your seam allowance on this shoulder bit here. I didn't do it when I was making that one because you can actually just fold it back and pin it at this point. And that's fine. So we'll be stitching from that folded edge all the way down to there. And we will also be doing the same on the other side, exactly the same. I'll just pin that other side now. Let's get that interfacing stuck down properly. Give me one second.
I think I have melted so many garments in my time that I never use enough heat or enough time putting my interfacing on, which is annoying because then it comes off by the time I get to this stage. So yeah, don't, uh, don't do what I do. Although I would rather my interfacing was coming off than I burned a big hole in yet another almost finished thing I was making. So let's turn this round and I'm just going to match these, match these notches on this side. And then fold a little bit back. Pin that in place and then I'm going to stitch this. Same seam allowance, one centimetre. This is a nice wee afternoon make. It doesn't take, you know, five five four hour sittings to make which is my kind of pattern something nice and quick especially if you are trying to sew like a summer wardrobe if you've joined in in one of the kind of instagram challenges where you're trying to stop buying things and just start making things instead it's much easier if you've got simpler quicker patterns to to work with And then a wee reverse at the end. And then same on the other side. I was talking to my uh, Birmingham franchisee Janine actually and she was saying that all these prints are very in for this coming summer, so I'm ahead of my time, who knew? All the kind of jungle prints, which I'm totally into anyway, so I was delighted to hear that. I'll be stocking up on all these kind of fun tropical fabrics. So I'm going to do the same again, but I'm going to trim a little bit of the seam allowance um, at this corner anyway, just so that I can get a nice point. The same here. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to zigzag this big long edge of my facing, which is will be on the inside in there, but you don't want that to be a roid because that will definitely free. So I'll just do a wee zigzag on that. So zigzag, stitch, my length I'm going to put to 5.5, uh, width sorry, and then my length is 1.5 so that will be fine. And just like we did on the shoulder seams, I'm just going to zigzag through, and this is only through one layer of fabric. You can keep the edge of your fabric against that one eighth mark again. It's actually a really good marker for doing your zigzags because it means that just one side of the needle is coming off the edge of the fabric, which is what you want. I always find a zigzag on a sewing machine so slow compared to an overlocker quite frustrating. I 
and when you're doing your zigzags, you don't have to do any reversing or anything like that. So you can see on one layer of fabric, it actually looks, it looks a little bit better, so it's kind of pulled at the edge in. Um, you're not going to be able to see this on the outside anyway, but it stops the frame, and that's what we want. So I'll just do the same on the other side. I always think yellow is one of those colours that just makes you happy if you wear it. Should be prescribed to people. I had a bright yellow coat that I bought in a shop and it was in the sale. Actually, it was really marked down probably because no one else wanted to wear the colour. It was an amazing sunflower yellow and went with nothing, but I wore it until I, it just fell apart. It got ended up getting really manky as well and I like there's no, no amount of dry cleaning could salvage it towards the end, but it was, I loved that coat. I feel like I might have to go and buy myself another yellow coat after this. To go with my bright purple bag? Maybe not. Maybe I should get a new bag as well, that's a good idea. Right, there we go. Okay. So we'll turn these bits out and you'll see how we get this kind of, it's almost like a little lapel style collar here, this little bit. So that's about we've just sewn. So when you turn it out, this is from the inside. That is what your collar looks like. It looks so much fancier than it is if you think about how easy that was to do. So just turn the other side out as well. And I'm just going to give it a wee press down the front. That piece of interfacing that's inside there is actually super handy because you can use it as a guide for your centre front, for where to press. It's a little bit fiddly. I found it quite annoying putting that piece of interfacing on because it's not that easy to get the markings. I'll show you the pattern piece. Um, actually, for the front, that's the back. Oh, maybe I've left it. Basically, your pattern piece has, this is not the right one, but it's got a, a big rectangle in the centre of the pattern which isn't that easy to mark in. It's a, bit of a, it's a bit of a pain, but it's totally worth it because that little bit of interfacing, not only is it necessary if you're going to be putting buttons and buttonholes in there, but it makes this bit a total breeze. There we go. And it's starting to look very much like a shirt now. And I think, you know, once you've done this, this is quite simple. There's no reason why you couldn't move on to more complicated shirts. It's a bit of a gateway to kind of blazers and stuff as well, because you've done the collar. It means that there's going to be less unfamiliar parts to it, which is good. Guy shirts, I keep saying I'm going to make Steve a shirt or a hoodie or anything. I've not, still not made him anything at all. Poor boy. I could teach him how to make it himself though, but he's not interested apparently. I'm the sewer in the house. He has been asking me to sew a button onto his trousers for about three months. And I keep saying, oh, I'll do it, I'll do it later. And I've not done it. He's probably going to end up going round to, round to his mum's house or something and asking her to do it. Or he could just do it himself, couldn't he? Because it's easy. He's a nightmare. Right. There we go. So the collar. The only bit left really is, um, with the collar, is to tuck in our raw edges. I'll move this iron out of the road. So 
So we've still got a raw edge in here, and that gets tucked away. and hidden by the folded edge from earlier. Remember I told you that all would become clear why we were folding that edge in? I think the pattern actually tells you to hand stitch this, but to be honest, I don't have time for that, so I'm going to machine stitch it. You're not really going to see it anyway. It's underneath the collar, and it's going to be at the back of your neck, so you won't see it. So I'm just tucking all these bits in. I'm going to snip this a little bit here. And it will just be a nice wee stitch, really close to the edge. I'm just going to clip this bit as well, just to make it sit a bit flatter. All I'm doing here is snipping a little bit of the seam allowance here, so that it will properly tuck in. And look nice and neat, which is what we want. There we go. If you wanted, you could, of course, do this by hand. Sit in front of the telly one night. Okay. Just going to stitch that quickly. And I put my pins in the wrong way, so that's excellent. If that's the only mistake I make, then that is fine by me. I was having nightmares of coming on and then having to unpick for, for three hours on telly, you know, since I've not got, I've not got a presenter on here to to talk over me secretly unpicking off screen, which has happened a lot, by the way. I think one time I actually managed to stitch in a bit of a sleeve, the end of a sleeve into an armhole. And when I watched it back, you couldn't tell that I was craftily unpicking here while John was talking away. I was quite proud of how, uh, how I hid that. But there would be no hiding if I did it here. And I've put it on a zigzag again. Right, straight stitch. Make sure you're on a straight stitch. And just stitching nice and close to the edge. Try and put your pins in the right way. Makes life a lot easier. So that's that bit all done. What it also wants you to do is it wants you to attach the top of the facing to the shoulder seam. So you can either do a hand stitch here or you can, if you make sure that this folded edge goes over the line of stitching that's in there, then you can pin it and you can do a wee stitch in the ditch in here to secure it. Um, so that you don't see it on the outside. So that's my seam there. You can stitch in there and that'll just stop that because otherwise that's going to flap down and really annoy you. So you want to do that on both sides. And you also, of course, want to do your side seams here. So they are dead simple. Right sides together. that so we'll be stitching this wee bit here and the other side there I'm not going to pin this I'm just going to go for it 
because it's a quite a simple, simple one. Make sure I'm on a straight stitch though. And you would also zigzag this as well. There's an optional pocket in this pattern as well. I've actually missed it out um, because I'm not a big fan of a pocket on a shirt, weirdly. I'd rather just, probably because it's another thing that's going to take, you know, 10 minutes of my time. And I'd rather just get things finished. I'm so impatient. But it's dead simple wee patch pocket that you can add if you want. Same on the other side. This pattern can you can also make it longer or shorter, which I always like because I've got quite a short body. Um, and this is probably a bit long for me. That one's a little bit long for me, but I I would always tie it up anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. But it's good to know there's a the option of lengthening it and shortening it. Okay, that's your side seams done. Zigzag them. And then we've almost got a complete shirt here. Last thing I want to show you is the cuffs. The cuffs are so easy, super, super simple. You've got a little rectangle of fabric here. We're going to put it right sides together and stitch along the short edge here. Make it into a loop. And then we are going to fold it wrong sides together. It's a bit like doing it's similar to a neckband on like a t shirt or something. So it's going to fold like that. So I've got right side there and a right side there as well. And then I'm just going to do a wee stitch to hold this in place. You could go ahead and just start to put this onto the shirt, but then you've got three layers of fabric and the likelihood that one of those layers of fabric is going to go AWOL is quite high. So just a wee stitch. So there's two ways that you can do this actually. There is, what the pattern wants you to do is to put it, so what I did actually, which I prefer I think, is I put this piece on, where's my, make sure that your seam there is at the bottom with the underarm seam. I put this over like that. And then stitched it on so that it then folds out the way like on this wee one here, which gives you a bit of a, a longer sleeve there. What you can do is you can do it so that this little piece goes on the inside. You stitch around there and then it folds back. So then it would come out and then it would fold back on itself. So what it would look like on this is that, but without the stitching on there. So you can ha you've got options on here. I'm going to try that way, I think. Let's see. So 
I'm going to match my bottom seam here. This might need a little bit of a stretch when you're sewing it in. Find your halfway points. So I'm putting a pin in here and I'm putting a pin in here across the way from each other. And then I'm going to find my quarter points like that. So we are. And just in case we do have to, if we've got any excess in here that we need to stretch out, we want to stretch it evenly. And I'm going to stitch this on. I tell you, it's so hot in this studio today that I think I could be putting this right on and I would feel right at home. I could be testing it out. I feel like it's about 30 degrees in here. They must have done that because, you know, I've got the tropical fabric, getting the tropical vibe in the studio. If you need to give this a wee stretch while you're sewing, a hand at the back and a hand at the front and just pulling it top but still letting the machine pull it through at its own pace. So then you would zigzag that edge. And then this would fold back like that. And you give it a wee press so that it sits nice and flat. And then all you need to do is put buttons or poppers down the, the stand and hem the bottom and you've got yourself a little shirt. So that's I've pretty much made that almost in an hour. Uh, I've cut it out beforehand, obviously. Um, but yeah, dead easy, give it a shot. Let us know if you have any problems with it and you need a hand in the, any of the Facebook pages. You might already have me on Facebook. That's the, the by my website there. If you go onto the website, we'll have a, a sewing quarter button so that you can get in touch. You can press the button and I can link you to this pattern and some other bits and pieces, so do pop on there. Also, we obviously do franchises, so if you want a little career change, you know where I am, drop us a wee message. Stay in touch. Thanks so much uh, for watching. You're all been so fabulous and I hope to see you all soon. Bye.